During World War II, German plans to smash British morale led to the Blitz. The bombs fell alike on the homes of the East End poor and the Mayfair rich, on shops, hospitals, churches. Nazi bombs killed almost 20,000 civilians and left 1.4 million people homeless. But nothing could prepare the country for the tragedy of March the 3rd, 1943, on the steps of an East London bomb shelter. And I thought I was going to die. The actual stairway was covered in two, three to four bodies height. During the war, the East End of London was a densely populated working class area. It was a, a very, very close community. Um, we all knew the people opposite and we'd all look after one another. Everybody was friendly. I mean, we, we lived upstairs and my grand and granddad lived downstairs. But the area's factories made it a major target during the Blitz, and many East Enders looked to Bethnal Green Underground for shelter. As one of the few deep level stations in the area, it could hold up to 7,000 people. For 13 year old Alf Morris, it was a part of life. We come home from school, and, the, and our parents would, or mother would say, go and line up at the tube to get a place. So you run down the escalators into the platform. And wherever you threw the blanket, that's where you slept that night. Once you got down there, and uh, you felt safe. By 1941, the London Blitz had petered out. But Londoners still lived in fear of surprise German bombing raids. So after news of a massive Allied raid on Berlin in early March 1943, London held its breath, fearing a retaliatory strike by the Germans. On the evening of March the 3rd, that fear seemed to become a reality. Around about 5 to 8, the radio just went dead. Boom. So we knew then that there was going to be an air raid. 20 minutes later, sirens rang out across the capital. My, my mother, my aunt, her two children, my, myself and my sister, run towards the tube. Me and my aunt run through Victoria Park Square. And we got to the top of the tube, and we started to go down. And there, there was loads of bangs, and we, my mother and aunt thought they were bombs. So we three ran on in front. And all of a sudden, we got to the middle of the staircase, and there was a terrific noise. The sound of an anti-aircraft gun was mistaken for bombs. Get down, get down, there's bombs, there's bombs, there's bombs. At that moment, hundreds of people trying to get into the shelter surged towards the wet and poorly lit stairs. My aunt got pushed to the right, and I got pushed to the right, to the left, and the people were all falling around me. Official accounts claim a woman and child slipped on the bottom step, causing those behind to fall. You couldn't move, you couldn't go down, and you couldn't go out. I was pressed against the wall. I felt myself being crushed. The two young boys were trapped. I was 13 and I was screaming for my mother, screaming, screaming hard. I put my hands in front of me and I slivered down. And I don't know how long I stayed like that. 17-year-old home guard recruit Bob Saxon was passing the tube on his way to work. People were crying and screaming because the actual stairway was covered in two, three to four bodies height. And as I walked down, I was actually saying sorry to everyone I stepped on. Bob wasn't alone in his bravery. All around him, ordinary people risked their lives to help. It was an air raid warden who reached Alf just in time. She put her arms underneath my arms and just laid back and just kept pulling and pulling and pulling. And they started moving all the bodies around me. I didn't know they were dead. And as I was on the floor, a policeman grabbed hold of me, took me upstairs. They was laying all the bodies along the pavement. 173 people had been killed in the crush. Joan Martin was a 26-year-old junior doctor at the local hospital where the dead and injured were taken. But when they did pull the bodies out, they laid them on the pavement and threw water on them in hoping to revive them. And we had to go through every one of them 
to see whether they were still alive or not. 62 of those who died were children, but not a single bomb fell on Bethnal Green that night. For months, I couldn't go to sleep because all the time I was seeing people being trampled on. It was the worst civilian disaster of World War II, but in the days that followed, there was a conspiracy of silence. Officials feared the news would damage the country's morale. The fact that one was told not to tell anybody was the serious thing. Those days, you did as you were told. Today, survivors Peter and Alf are meeting rescuer Bob Saxon and Dr Joan Martin to share their memories of loss. I didn't talk about this for 50 years. Nor did I. We were told by the elder people to say nothing, and you kept yourself quiet. Never forget it. Elf was one of the last to be saved. Had it on your mind all these years. I didn't attempt to tell people about it, not even my own family, because the next day in, at the hospital, they told us that we were to remain completely silent. In fact, we were sworn to secrecy. That's the one who died with me, Barbara. She was seven. I was 12 and a half. And that's my sister. She was 17. Both died standing in front of me. Dreadful. Dreadful night. And it's good to talk about it. Yeah. In 2013, after almost 70 years, a permanent memorial was laid to the victims of the Bethnal Green tube disaster. Bob, Alf, Joan and Peter finally have somewhere to pay their respects to those who died in the terrible tragedy. I was looking at every one of them and I, I could see some of my friends and their mums and little kids who sold this to him. When my mother died, in her wardrobe was the coat my sister was wearing when she lost her life. It's something that in my life I should never, ever forget. Later, two people whose lives are connected by a Bethnal Green hero meet for the first time. I always wanted to thank PC Ben, but I was never able to. The end of London took the brunt of German bombing during World War II, and its population sought safety in the deep underground tube stations. But on the 3rd of March 1943, 173 people rushing to take shelter in Bethnal Green tube station were crushed to death on its steps. Thomas Penn was an off-duty policeman escorting his heavily pregnant wife to the shelter. Doreen Freeman is their daughter. He saw something going on at the entrance so he took my mother across the road to stand her under a railway bridge, went over to the entrance and saw a crush of people there. Then went down and started pulling people out. Got overcome with the heat. He climbed back up, recovered, went back down, carried on pulling people out until the other services came and, they, and then other people went and helped. Margaret Mackay was six months old and was taken by her mother to the tube shelter that evening. Why she went to the shelter, no one knows, because she never, ever went to that shelter. She always went to one opposite where they lived. Margaret's mother died in the crush. Margaret survived, but it was 20 years before she learned exactly what happened to them that night and that PC Thomas Penn was the man who saved her. As the disaster was happening, he saw Mum holding me up and he said, if you're going to die, lady, pass me your baby. And she passed me to him and he passed me out to the entrance. If he hadn't got me from Mum, I would have probably died as well. I mean, he could have lost his life also. I mean, he's such a brave man, he went back in three or four times. To see women and children dead and dying must have been horrific, especially he was a young man then. You know, he had one child and I was on the way. I, I always wanted to thank PC Ben, but I was never able to because I didn't know till later what he did. 
Today, Margaret and Doreen are meeting to celebrate PC Penn's heroism and bring Margaret one step closer to the man who saved her life. I was told that his wife was outside and she was heavily pregnant. And that, that was must me. Be you. And he put her under the railway arch, Bethnal Green. Yeah. And uh, there she stood. Oh, bless her. And there you are. Yeah. 70 years. Yeah, oh, 70 crikey. years. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, Lord. I wished I could have met your dad, but it wasn't to be. Because you were, what, six months? Yeah, yeah. And I was three, born three weeks afterwards, yeah. so there's not a lot of difference between us. No, there isn't. Oh, I'm so thrilled to meet you. You've oh, never seen a picture of my father. That's my father. That's him when he first joined the police. Was and that's young. him later on oh, as an older me. man. And they're a present for you to keep. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Thank you so much, You're Doreen. very welcome. Thank you so much. I don't know what it means to me. But <laughs> I, and he deserved a lot more recognition than he got. Mm. Oh, bless him. Bless him. That's Thank so, you, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, PCP. <laughs> <laughs>